Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with holiday ham and potato casserole. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to feed an amazing holiday meal to a large table full of hungry people using only one pound of ham, which is one way to go if the budget's a little tight. But if you've made a fortune with NFTs, which are, I have no idea. But anyway, if times are good and you were able to serve a whole ham, this recipe is absolutely perfect for the leftovers. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is a very simple, easy cream sauce. And that starts by sauteing some onions in butter over medium heat, along with a nice big pinch of salt. And what we'll do is cook those stirring for a few minutes until they just start to turn translucent or until they sort of kind of look like this. At which point we'll stir in some flour, which is what's gonna thicken the sauce. And we will cook that stirring for about two minutes just to take off that raw starchy edge. And if we want to sound like we know what we're doing, we would refer to this as a roux, R-O-U-X. But anyway, fancy French culinary terms aside, once that's cooked for a few minutes, we'll go ahead and dump in our cold heavy cream. And then we'll take a whisk and give that a good mix. And if you're thinking, I thought you had to whisk vigorously when you add that so you don't get lumps. Well, you don't. If your liquids are cold and your roux is hot, you will not get any lumps, guaranteed. And if we do, we'll just say that was a piece of onion. Oh yeah, that's our cover story. But seriously, we actually have a t-shirt that says that. Hot roux, cold milk, no lumps. Speaking of which, once we've stirred in our cream, we will stop and add some cold milk. And we will whisk that in as well. At which point we'll raise our heat to medium high. And we will cook this stirring occasionally until it just starts to simmer and thickens up beautifully. And in between stirrings, we can add a few more ingredients, including a little more salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and of course a few shakes of cayenne. And we'll give this a stir, mostly to make sure that sauce is not sticking to the bottom. And then I hate to spice shame anybody, but the next thing we'll do is grate in some fresh nutmeg, which is so far superior to the pre-ground stuff that I really hope that's what you use. And will I be ashamed if you don't? Yes, I will. But either way, we'll go ahead and stir that in. And before you know it, this mixture is going to start to simmer at which point you'll see it thicken up significantly. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this. And once it does, that's it. We will turn off the heat and we will whisk in the last two ingredients, a little dash of Worcestershire sauce, followed by last but not least, some fresh thyme leaves. Or if you don't have a thyme plant on your windowsill, which you really should, a nice big pinch of dry thyme would be a good substitute. And once we stir that in, we'll grab a ladle and we will simply reserve this until needed. So our cream sauce is looking good and ready to go, which means we can move on to the slicing of the potatoes, or potatoes if you can't find potatoes. And as usual, my preferred tool for this is this cheap mandolin slicer. And I don't like to slice these too thin. All right, I'm shooting for about an eighth of an inch, or right, maybe a little bit thicker. And of course, when you get down to the ends, be careful. And be sure to use this plastic guard, which I do every time that I do this on camera. And as we slice our potatoes, we're definitely gonna to wanna to keep them in cold water so they don't discolor. And no, we don't have to do them all at once. All right, we're gonna do three layers using about three potatoes per layer. So I'll often just slice one layer's worth at a time. And if you wanna make these a little thicker or a little thinner, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the Jada Smith of your potato with. And anything close is gonna work as long as they're consistent, which is why I like to use the vegetable slicer. All right, you can cut them by hand, of course, but it's so much faster and easier this way. And that's it, once our potatoes are sliced, we can move into final assembly, which will start by covering the bottom of a large deep casserole dish with about 25% of our sauce, or right, maybe slightly less, since I do like to save a little bit extra for the last quarter of the sauce, which goes on the top. But anyway, once that's in there, we'll go ahead and shingle our first layer of potatoes, which by the way, have been thoroughly drained before placing them in here. All right, a few drops of water here or there are okay, but we don't want these dripping wet since that will add too much moisture to the casserole. And after each layer of potatoes, we're gonna to wanna to salt the top of those generously. Since like me, potatoes love salt. And that's it, we'll top those with about a third of what's left of our sauce, which we're just dripping, we're not spreading. Okay, we don't wanna wreck our nice, beautiful, even layer. And then we will top this with a generous application of grated cheese, which in my case was a nice white Irish cheddar, but something like a Gruyere 
or really any other kind of melty cheese you like would work. And once that's down, we can place over our first layer of ham, and I'm using some beautiful pre-sliced French style ham. And the thinner it's sliced, the better. So if you are doing this with leftover ham, you wanna make sure you slice it really thin. And since we're doing three layers of potatoes and two layers of ham, and we're gonna use a pound of ham, we wanna place about a half pound per layer. Although I'm pretty sure I put more on this layer than the second one. But I don't think that really matters too much. And once that's set, we'll do another layer of potatoes, which we will definitely not forget to salt. And then we will spoon over a little less than half the sauce we have left. Since like I said, we wanna make sure we have plenty left to spread over the top. And then of course, after the saucing, we will repeat the cheese in and the ham in. And yes, as you may have noticed, I am giving each layer a little pressing, just to sort of compress things a little bit. And as I shingle over the last layer of potatoes, I will admit to saving the best biggest ones for the last layer. Even though by the time this is baked and browned and bubbling, you're probably not gonna notice any imperfections on the top layer anyway. But I did wanna mention, in case you were thinking, man, this guy really lucked out. All the potatoes on that top layer look perfect. And then to finish this, we will ladle over all the rest of our sauce. And then we'll switch to a spatula so we can make sure we scrape out every last bit. And then once we have that spread out as evenly as we can over the top, we will finish up with the last of our cheese. And that's it, our holiday ham and potato casserole is now ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for about an hour and a half, or until it's beautifully browned and bubbling, and hopefully looks like this. But we never rely on appearances, no matter how gorgeous they are, so we'll definitely want to test with a knife, which should slide in with no effort, since the only way to screw this up is to undercook the potatoes, which would be a crime against nature. And that's it. I like to let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes before trying to cut it, just so things sort of set up a little bit. But don't worry, this thing stays hot a long time. So I did let this rest for a little bit before grabbing a spatula and cutting out a piece, which for the first piece came out surprisingly well. And I only had to do a little bit of touch up before grabbing a fork and digging in. And that, my friends, whether it's for a holiday meal or not, is something you're definitely gonna wanna eat. All right, this thing is so creamy and decadent, but at the same time, not too rich, which is why I like to mix the milk and the cream in the sauce as opposed to some recipes which use all cream. And even though we only used a pound of ham in a casserole that's gonna feed eight to 10 people, I think we have the perfect ratio of potato to meat. Okay, we're gonna get ham in every bite. So like I said in the intro, if the budget's a little tight, this is a great way to stretch the ham without anyone knowing that's even what you're doing. But anyway, to summarize, if you enjoy scalloped potatoes or potatoes au gratin and or ham, you will not be able to shovel this stuff into your face fast enough. It really was incredible. And because this is a little bit on the rich and decadent side, I do suggest you plate this up next to a nice green salad, which I did here so I could take some contractually obligated pictures and also take one more bite of what is supposed to be Michelle's piece. But no matter what you serve this with, or whether you do it to save a few dollars, or as a way to use up some leftover holiday ham, in any event, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, 